Hi, this is Christy Adair with the Sherman Oaks Neighborhood Council's Public Safety Committee, and we are welcoming Gary Hanfling today. Gary has been a ham operator since 2016. He's been a active CERT member since 2006. He's very active with NBC Universal CERT team. He's been active with the LAFD CERT team. But what we're here to talk today about is ham operator and walkie-talkie radios. Radio communication is really important post-disaster and also just when the power goes out. Or like if your dog runs out the front door and you need to go after him, you can take your walkie-talkie with you and um, ask for help. <laughs> so Gary is here today to talk us through different kinds of radios and how we can use them. Hi, Gary. I'm uh, part of the LAFD ACS, uh, which is a volunteer ham radio group uh, managed by the Los Angeles Fire Department. And as Christy said, I also volunteer with CERT and have about 23 years of experience with that. Christy asked me uh, to speak here today about emergency communications in the neighborhood and how you can start planning and being prepared. Um, we are so used to being able to pick up our cell phones and text or call without any problems. And most of us don't have any landlines anymore. Uh, so we don't plan or even think about what we would do if our phones or computers didn't work. I mean, in our normal lives, uh, when things go wrong with your phone, uh, normally, we just borrow the husband's or the wife's phone, and uh, that's about as much disaster planning as we do. Um, but when things go wrong, uh, we get out of our normal routine, and we're a little bit lost. Um, the police, fire, and hospitals uh, have backup plans, and part of their plans are a variety of ham radio groups. Um, they're made up for volunteers and they help out with communications. Uh, the police use a group called DCS. Our hospitals have ARIES, which is Amateur Radio Emergency Service. And the fire department has ACS, which is Auxiliary Communication Service. Uh, these are volunteer ham radio groups and they'll be called upon if needed to help out. But what are you and your neighbors are going to do when things go wrong? How do you get help if needed? And what is your plan going to be? So in the following presentation, uh, some of the presentations or suggestions on the communications and is just one part of an overall plan of being prepared. I'll start off with some real world uh, disasters examples uh, that shows what can happen with the communications. So uh, one example is the Bay Area earthquake in 2006. So neither landline or cell phone systems worked for at least the first day post the event. And in some areas, much longer, uh, due to system overload, damaged cell phones, uh, loss of communications, impacted responses, and the needed communications with the company uh, with the public. Uh, assume cell networks will be overloaded or damaged, and about seven percent of the landlines, cell calls, you know through the first few hours are uh, gonna be a lot of problems. So uh, losing effective communications is the greatest logistic problem during an emergency event, event. And here's a clip. Effective emergency response depends on communication, the ability to maintain situational awareness through the constant flow of information. During and after Hurricane Katrina, communication systems failed, severely hampering information flow and response operations. In New Orleans, most of the city was flooded. The combined effects of wind, rain, storm surge, breached levees, and flooding knocked out virtually the entire infrastructure, electrical power, roads, water supply and sewage, and communication systems. Thomas Stone, 
Fire Chief, St. Bernard Parish. We uh, lost our communication system. And when you're not able to communicate, you can't coordinate your response. You never, ever think that you will lose your entire infrastructure. So in your neighborhood, how will you be able to communicate outside your street if the cell service is down and you have no internet? So there's a few things you can do. <laughs> uh, simple, uh, you can send a runner out, hopefully to a main street that's working and flag down a police, fire, whatever you can. If you're conventional, um, communications, landline, cell phone, internet. If uh, they go down, you could be out for a while. And then you sort of back down to these emergency choices. You've got uh, two-way radio, which are broken down into FRS, GMRS, MERS, and ham radio. And so we can talk about each one of those. So FRS is Family Radio Service. You don't require a license. Uh, you can just go down the store and buy it. I would suggest you read the manual <laughs> and also buy some batteries while you're at it. But it'd be good if you had one already and you didn't, uh, couldn't run off and get one. They're a short range, so you only have uh, transmitter power, about half a watt, and uh, basically line of sight. Then we have the GMRS, which is General Mobile Radio Service. This anyone can buy. There is no test, uh, but you do have to buy a, um, a license from the FCC. At this time, it's about uh, $35 for 10 years. And that is for everyone in your, in your immediate family, everyone who's at the, you know, the same household. You just buy that one license and uh, they can use a GMRS radio. Um, GMRS radios have more power, so a longer range. And uh, some of them, depending on what you buy, they can use uh, repeaters if they're working after the, the disaster. And they also share the same channels if, as the FRS radios do. Channels one through seven is shared. And you can talk over them to each other um, straightforward. It's no problems. And the range of these, so the EMS and FRS radios are limited. Um, on certain channels on the FRS, they have lower power than uh, other channels. So when you look at your manual, it'll tell you. And also you'll see uh, manufacturers will claim 35 miles and all this. Uh, it's a bit more limited among um, cities and buildings. They usually do those tests over open water where it's all flat and nothing in the way. So uh, you can't really go by that. So uh, radios, they're pretty straightforward. Uh, they have uh, pretty common controls, but there is some differences and you have to read the instructions and become familiar with the radio controls. So we'll just go through the basic radios. There's lots of them. Uh, these are just a sample. So in the first radio there on the left, it just has a knob for on and off and volume on the same knob. The next one you have uh, Menu, you have to go into a menu, uh, go in and you can adjust. The plus and minus you see on that particular radio is for volume. If you don't press a menu button, that's just up and down volume. Um, next one over is a little bit more confusing. It has an on off knob and a volume and then a separate knob for channel. And then the last one over on the right, uh, it has an on off and uh, on a knob and volume, but then it has buttons for up and down for changing channel. So they're not that complicated, but you gotta be familiar with them to use them. So on a couple of these radios, 
there's an on off button. Uh, on the one on the left, there's an RNG button. And on others, it's the knob at the top that's also a volume control. So you just got to get your radio and become familiar with it. On the yellow one here, the volume is at the top control. Then on some radios, you have a control called squelch, which is normally um, it's a little ring that's on the bottom of your volume knob and you can adjust that. And that's to adjust for uh, sound, your normal atmospheric surrounding RF sound, that is. And you adjust that until it goes quiet. And that way you only listen to uh, you being uh, picking up radio transmissions. It'll, you'll be able to hear them without listening to the noise all day. So that's called a squelch control. And then uh, all these are press to talk, PTT switch. And usually it's on uh, one side. It's usually on the left-hand side where that uh, green bar is pointing to. Um, some have two buttons, one for low power and one for high power. But uh, they're always on the left, as you see that radio. I've never seen one on the right. So I guess left handies have to get used to pressing the button. Uh, and then the microphone speaker is usually at the front. Uh, some of them, it's the same device. Some of them have a little microphone. It's like a little hole you see at the front, but a separate microphone, I should say. But uh, on most of them, they have the same speaker. It acts as a microphone as well. So uh, let's see, we have channel select on some, uh, as it says, it's got rotary knob for the channels, others, uh, have an up down button that sometimes depending on what mode you're in that could be volume or it could be channel so uh, the radios you just have to know your radio okay and then the antenna most important part <laughs> uh, you make sure when you use the antenna uh, that you use it uh, as it's vertically there's some bad examples there where it's in a loop and also upside down. Uh, they will work, but you limited your uh, range that you can either transmit or you receive. But uh, the good example, uh, straight up vertical and speak across the microphone and uh, press, the, press the talk button. All right. And the other most important is the batteries. Most of the radios these days uh, come with uh, battery packs. Uh, they're usually rechargeable. Some uh, are fixed and uh, they use a uh, USB charger. Others uh, have a battery charger like the one shown on the screen there. And you charge them up. Uh, they're individual batteries. Others are in battery pack which have a charging uh, attachment and make sure you charge them. Yeah, and as the sign says, <laughs> or text, always carry spare batteries. Uh, that, that's a big important thing. And also when you uh, are not using your radio and store it, make sure you pull the batteries out and put them in a separate uh, bag. Uh, that'll help save them. And if uh, one of the batteries leak, it won't ruin your radio. All right, so a two-way radio is not like a phone um, because <laughs> when one is talking and holding down the microphone, no one else, uh, you can't hear anyone else. With a, uh, a phone, someone can talk back while you're talking and you can overhear them or, but with a, a radio, when, some, when someone holds down the, the press to talk button, no one else could understand anything. And if everyone talks, 
it is a mess. Uh, so there has to be some certain basic rules. So when do you talk? Normally when you turn on your radio, before you talk, you listen. Make sure no one else is using the channel. Uh, if you don't hear anyone, then uh, you press the button. You think about what you're going to say. You give it a second, and then you say what you need to say. And you keep the transmission short because if there's an emergency and someone else wants to uh, pass along any information, they won't be able to until you finish. So normally uh, communications is kept brief and to the point. So push to talk, pause, then uh, say what you need to say and then release the push to talk. By that little pause at the beginning, uh, some people press the button and start talking and they get cut off at the beginning of their uh, communications. Four basic uh, sort of pro words that you use. Uh, this is when you're identifying yourself over when you're finished talking and you want someone and you want the answer or someone else's turn, go ahead, meaning you're ready to receive because if they're giving you uh, some notes, uh, maybe some directions or maybe some information, you might have a pen or paper ready. So you normally, I'm ready to uh, give you some information and over, and then you say, wait until I'm ready. And then you say, go ahead and you're ready to write. And then when you're finished, you say out. And as it says here, the station who initiates the call terminates it. All right. Here's an example. So uh, normally you don't use names, but uh, we're talking about neighborhoods here and you already know each other. So it's who you want to talk to first. So if Sally wanted to talk to George, George would say, George, this is Sally, do you copy? Or part of a CERT group would say CERT operations. This is CERT team alpha. And then the answer would be, uh, hi, Sally, you've got George or go ahead, Sally, this is George. Something to let her know that you're listening and you're ready to either listen more or copy down the information. Uh, alpha team, this is operations, go ahead. So they know that they're listening and got their attention. So I don't think I need to read the whole slide in front of you. So uh, we'll go on to the next one. So it's wait to be recognized before speaking. Right? Don't relay any information until you have their attention. So make sure they're listening before you pass the information over. And they acknowledge that you receive the information. And if it's complicated, uh, you should repeat it back or important to make sure that you got the message correctly. So uh, don't speak louder in noisy environments. Uh, it doesn't help uh, the noise plus your voice speaking over it just causes a distortion and it can't be understood very well. So uh, what you do in noisy environments, uh, most of the, uh, uh, the radios, uh, you have, you can get an earphone for them or you can get a headset if you need them. Uh, you turn the radio down, the volume down, or you could shield the mic a little bit. You talk across the device, you don't talk into it, and you use a normal voice. And usually that uh, that will work fine. 
Most radios these days, uh, these are the uh, FRS radios and also GMRS radios. They have what they call privacy tones. Um, you can't really hear them, they're inaudible. There are a series of tones. And so um, when you use these tones, um, only on the receiver, uh, you use them mainly in very busy, crowded, RF crowded areas uh, that uh, you out like at Disneyland with the family and you only want to listen to a member of your family. So you use these privacy tones. And so they go up to, I think, 128. So channel one, there's like 22 channels on a normal FRS radio. Uh, if you choose channel one, there's a sub channel between one and 228, or sorry, 128. So you just choose one of those and you tell your rest of the family that's the subtone or sub channel you're using. So when they talk, uh, your phone usually gives a beep and you can understand there's someone coming from your, you talk to your member of your family. But that's only, they're transmitting on channel one to everyone. You only get alerted because you have changed or set your sub-channel to that. Everyone else can hear all that. So it's, it's more of a, a group thing uh, if you're only interested in what uh, your group has to say, basically. But everyone can hear it who's got a radio on that channel. Uh, they can hear your conversation. So it doesn't give you any privacy. If, uh, like, uh, I know you all know CERT, so the way they use the radios, they'll split up the channels between different groups and they communicate over separate channels. And so uh, this is just a, uh, a simple version of a breakdown of what you could do uh, with your neighborhoods. Each neighborhood could, could have a separate channel. And uh, they, even though they're side by side or next door, uh, you won't interfere with each other. Um, this is just a, a layout of how it could be done. Uh, this slide was borrowed from a cert slide pack, but uh, the neighborhoods could do the same thing uh, with that. Uh, one thing uh, to do with that is uh, communications with these little handhelds. Uh, buildings, as you see, uh, they get in the way and uh, they're low power. So normally uh, you can move people around uh, around the obstacles and they repeat the communications. On GRMRS, uh, they have built in repeater channels on some of the models. And if there's a repeater up in a mountain that's near or up high, uh, they'll repeat your signal to a lower uh, group member. Uh, who can pick up the uh, conversation and communicate whatever you need to communicate. But uh, that's one thing that's called uh, relays. There's uh, repeater stations. Uh, usually they're not on uh, FRS radios. They're more on uh, GMRS radios, uh, that feature. Uh, but it all depends on on how, what the terrain is and the buildings that your neighborhood groups are in and uh, how they use them, basically. So anyone with a, uh, a tall building, uh, they can get up and they uh, will be heard further because the higher you are, the further the radio signals go. So uh, what you can do, um, if you can get the word out, uh, is to uh, get your neighborhoods and your neighborhood peoples in your neighborhood to start using these radios on a basis, like uh, when they go camping or if they go to the park or if they go out bicycle riding uh, and get used to using these radios and get familiar with them. So when um, 
a disaster or something happens, they know how well they work and where they can use them. Um, so there's also, once you buy them, you can also um, go to join radio nets. There's usually regular ones uh, around most areas. In the valley here, there's a weekly Sunday uh, at 10 o'clock, sorry, 10 a.m., I should say, radio net on Channel 20. And uh, that is run by uh, one of our guys in ACS. Uh, it's a great net, uh, very friendly, and welcomes all newcomers. So uh, you should get the radio out, uh, not only buy them, get familiar with them, read the manual, and you'll be able to communicate when, as Chrissy said, when everything goes black and dark and the power's out and you can't communicate, you just want to know whether it's your place or the place next door or the next neighborhood over. And so uh, just learning how to use those radios uh, uh, could be very helpful during disaster. And so on the radio net, uh, when you do join, um, there's a, a net control. So when you turn the radio on and to the right channel to 20, if you listen to one of the Valley Channel 20, uh, you'll hear, and they'll be called net control. And they'll introduce themselves. They'll give their call sign or their name and their location. And they'll ask for people who want to join the net. Uh, just get on the, on the radio, press it in, state your name, where you're located, uh, just a general area, no you know, pinpoint you know, address. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and they'll talk about all different things on the net. Usually uh, the one on, uh, on the Sunday uh, morning net at 10 o'clock, um, it's usually just uh, any, they'll ask if you have the information or request any information. Uh, other than that, uh, it's pretty straightforward and it gets you an idea about how to use uh, the radios and what a net's like because during an emergency, uh, there'll be a lot of people on radios and knowing how to use a radio and what's the procedure will help out a lot. Uh, and you'll be all hopefully be able to get your information through if you need um, any help in your uh, neighborhood. Uh, you'll be able to contact someone else who may be in a different location, whose phones are working, uh, who can get on the internet, who can get help that you may need. So uh, that's about it. It's a fairly basic overall use of the FRS radios. Um, but uh, I'm sure if you need something more detailed, uh, that Christy can arrange something. 